Hey boys and girls, welcome to week one of July. I can't believe it's July already. I hope you've been enjoying your summer. This month we're talking, still talking, about making waves. What you do today can make a difference to, in the world around you, it can make a change. Um, our new Bible verse though, since it's July, is God began a good work in you, and I'm sure that he will carry it on until it is completed. That will be on the day Christ Jesus returns. That's in Philippians 1.6. Have a great week. Enjoy today's lesson. When was the last time you made a difference in this world? That sounds big, right? Like campaigning for class president, or feeding every single hungry person in your town, or running a marathon in support of ending cancer. Those are great things, big things. But the truth is, you don't have to do big things to make a difference. No person is an island. Well, not quite like that. It means that all of us, every single kid and grown up in this world are connected. Everything you do, no matter how small, can affect someone else. You made a difference to your family this morning just by waking up. Good morning. Since you're going to make a difference no matter what you do, choose to make a difference for good. You make a difference for good when you say thanks to your mom for making your lunch when you let another kid get in line ahead of you, when you get on FaceTime with grandma instead of playing just one more video game. Hey, grandma. Even the smallest action in your day can make a big difference. It's like dropping a tiny pebble in a lake. The ripples can travel further than you could ever imagine. When you let God be all you need in every breath, the power of God's spirit can truly help you make waves. Then others will see God at work in you. That's why making waves is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. All right, everybody. Clap your hands now. Let's make some waves together. Let's change the world. Come on. God, I'm so amazed by your goodness.
Haley, question for you. What do you like to do when it's summertime? Do you go on vacation or play in the sprinklers or fire hydrants? Do you stay inside all summer playing video games? One of my favorite things to do is go to the beach. It's the perfect place to make waves because what you do today can change the world around you. You meet so many different kinds of people when you're at the beach. Surfers, gnarly, cowabunga, treasure hunters. <laughs> Woo! Hey, hey, yeah! <gasps> A bottle cap from 2017. Tourists. Ooh, oh, oh! At the beach, not only can you see literal waves being made, but you can make waves by showing things like goodness, gentleness, and especially kindness. In today's story, you'll hear one of Jesus' most famous parables about someone who showed kindness. And it wasn't someone you'd expect. So, you know, don't bail on me, jellies. Hang ten and we can make the drop on a twin fin. Seaweed slushies, am I right? Um, wipe out, point break, uh, you know? <laughs> what, what, am I, what am I even saying? <laughs> uh, Later, <laughs> dudes, du dudettes. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. When Jesus traveled to a town, great crowds gathered to hear him teach, fishermen and merchants, beggars and rich men, little children and important scholars. Many people listened with open minds and hearts, but a few just wanted to prove that they already had the answers. One day, a law expert stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, what must I do to receive eternal life? What is written in the law? How do you understand it? The law expert smirked. We can read off the answers perfectly. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. The crowd was likely impressed. Clearly this man's a well-studied scholar. You have answered correctly. Do that, and you will live. The law expert couldn't quite leave it at that. He wanted to know just how little he can do and still look good. By neighbor, are we talking someone within 50 feet of my house? Across the street? Not down the block, surely. I mean, really, who is my neighbor? Jesus didn't give the law expert a dictionary definition of neighbor. In fact, he gave a more creative answer. Jesus told a story. If he told that same story today, it might sound something like this. One day, a man prepared to make a trip from Jerusalem down to Jericho. Hey, no bus, no Uber. Looks like I'll be walking. The way was steep and rugged with many twists and huge rocks. That looks like a giant egg. And that one looks like a goat. That one looks like a an excellent hiding place for robbers. Ah! Stick him up. Get his cash. Don't forget the new shoes. The robbers stripped a man of everything. They even beat him up. They left him on the side of the road, nearly dead. Help, help please. The hot sun beat down on the injured man. He was too weak to even crawl. But after what seemed like hours, he finally heard footsteps preacher was traveling down a narrow road, practicing his next sermon. 
Now you may ask, why do we need to raise money for a brand new church building with an indoor swimming pool and covered parking for the pastoral Tesla? To do the Lord's work, of course. When the preacher saw the engine man ahead, he quickly shifted to the other side of the road. Water, please. Ah, uh, not really my department. That's pastoral care. I'll send a memo. The preacher quickly went on his way, still polishing his sermon notes. As the sun got lower in the sky, the engine man started to lose hope. But once again, he heard footsteps. Help me. A church worship leader was hurrying along the road, singing along with the music in his earbuds. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. The worship leader glimpsed the wounded man ahead, but pretending he hadn't seen a thing. He trotted to the other side of the road and kept right on going. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. The wounded man was desperate. The sun began to set as another traveler came along. The man tried to lift his head. Perhaps he could see the approaching stranger. Oh no. The stranger was a man from the nearby region of Samaria, even though they shared the same ancestors. The Jews and the Samaritans hated and mistrusted each other for hundreds of years. But unlike the preacher and the worship leader, the Samaritan stopped when he saw the wounded man. Oh no! The Samaritan felt compassion for the injured man. He slid off his motorcycle and used his first aid kit to clean and bandage the man's wounds. Let's get you someplace safe. Carefully, the Samaritan laid the injured man across the back of his motorcycle. Easy now. You take, you take it slow. By the last light of the setting sun, the Samaritan brought the wounded man to an inn and made sure he had a good bed to sleep in for the night. The Samaritan found the innkeeper. Please take care of this man until he's all better. Here, here's my debit card and if you have any extra expenses, I'll pay you back when I return. Murmurs of surprise rippled through the crowd as Jesus finished his unusual story. Jesus looked directly at the law expert. Which of the three do you think was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by robbers? The law expert's eyes dropped, mind racing, looking for a way out. But the answer was clear. The one who felt sorry for him. Go and do as he did. Through his story, Jesus was clear. Your neighbor is not only someone who lives near you or is like you. Your neighbor is anyone who needs your help and kindness. Showing kindness to someone can be easy, especially when that someone is a lot like you. But Jesus' parable reminds us that we should be kind to everyone, even people who are different. People who look different, act different, and think different than we do. Showing kindness means treating people the way you want to be treated. It can mean helping someone who seems lost. Okay, so you wanna take a right at the one and then a left on Dillon Beach Road. There are some great views of the sunset out there. You'll love it. Kindness can mean learning how to communicate in a new way. Okay, so hanging 10 is when I hang all 10 of my toes off of the surfboard. <laughs> that is so totally rad. <laughs> Did I say that right? <laughs> When you're kind, it could mean you're giving up what you want to do to spend time with someone else. Wow, you are really good at this game. There are a lot of ways to show kindness and a lot of people who need it. So the one thing to remember today is this, show kindness to everyone. You can make waves of kindness to the people around you, not just your friends and family, but everyone. And if you need help, ask God. When you put your trust in Jesus, God gives you the Holy Spirit to help you show kindness. And if you need some practice, you can always go to the beach, if you can find one. Okay, so I go west uh, a bunch of miles. No, no, east a bunch of miles. Wait, no, maybe, maybe I'm upside down. <laughs> 